Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you the latest SharePoint list features that have just been announced by Microsoft. Um, basically, what they've done is they've released a training video as part of this announcement, and I'm going to be showing you this and walking you through it. I'll be stopping every so often just to share my thoughts and hopefully demystifying any of the kind of buzzwords and things like that, which are not so clear as part of this video. So let's jump in and take a look. information and organize work. Last year, lists got a visual refresh with updates like view tabs, filter pills, new column types, and performance improvements that are almost twice as fast. But the innovation did not stop there. We continue to make lists simple, smart, and flexible so you can stay on top of what matters most to you and your team. Let's take a look. My team is focused on the launch of a new product in 2025. As we count down to the launch moment in 134 days, a lot of issues keep popping up that we need to track, fix, and ensure they're completed on time. We use an issue trackers lists. Now, one of the most important pieces of this list is having an easy way to log issues and get them into the list with lists forms, I can easily create a new issues intake. I can this actually is, is a really fantastic feature that previously you, you would just kind of either had, to, uh, well, you had a couple of different options when it comes to customizing the forms of SharePoint list, you either had to just deal with having an awful interface and out and, uh, out of the box SharePoint list form, which just looked horrible and dated. You'd have to recreate it with Power Apps, um, which came with its own set of problems anyway, because you're building it as a Canvas app, so it kind of had to fit into the, the mold of what a Canvas app was, and you could quite easily end up building in bugs and things like that. Or you could use JSON to format your lists, which realistically you need to be a bit of a programmer or use Copilot or ChatGPT or something like that to help write that sort of JSON uh, formatting. So this is a fantastic way that you can create really eye-catching looking forms with no code, it's just all using the user interface. Add a custom logo, either for my company or the issue that I have. And then you'll see that not only do I limit myself to the rows and columns in the list, I can add new ones like the attachment field. With simple drag and dropping, I can reorder to be in the position that I want, and I can show and hide the different fields that are relevant. Now I am all simple user interface stuff. Brand new when an item is critical, I want all the information. But when it's only a high priority or a normal or low priority, I can actually skip to the end of the form because I don't need all the same detail. Now, in this now anyone will know to achieve this previously with forms would have been a, a bit of a nightmare. Because as I say, I, if I was to be given this requirement, I would have had to have built it in Power Apps. And it wouldn't have been as simple as just a drag and drop few clicks like this, I can tell you. Form, I can custom color the theme that I want. I can have it notify me when it's sent, and I get to have a start date and an end date. So for my product launch, I'm going to have this form stop accepting responses. It's it, a lot of the user interface is a bit like Microsoft Forms. And now I can customize the message that's sent whenever they've de definitely been inspired by Microsoft Forms. When the form ends and stops accepting replies. Now, when I send this form, I'm actually going to walk you through what it looks like when this is pasted as if someone else was using it. So when I load this form, you see the beautiful theming and logos, and I can add in my issue. Now, notice when I make it critical, I have all these fields to fill in with the details. That's of really cool. But when I switch to something that's normal, I only get the one additional field. I can submit this form, and it'll appear in my list as if anyone on my team was doing it. This new item appears in my list, as you see here, right on the top. But you also notice I have a lot of new items coming in. I've made a new view for the incoming issues that's filtered to new items, and I have it grouped by the different priority order. I can go into my grid mode to easily edit in line to assign the person that needs to fix this bug. I'm going to update it to triage since it's no longer new. I've taken a look at it and I'm gonna assign these in the priority order that they come in. But what would be really useful is seeing these items move through the progress, not just from new to triage, but throughout the entire journey. 
I'm going to create a brand new board view and I'm going to have the board view organized based on status so I can actually see the items as they shift towards completed. If you've used Microsoft Planner before, this looks very much like Planner. recognize where the fields appear, and I can drag and drop these between them, and it'll actually update the status of them. Now, in this blocked item, I'm not entirely sure if it's actually unblocked. So before I move it, I'm going to leave a comment to Mark, the owner here. And now what this is doing is at mentioning him, just like at mentions in Word, Excel, or PowerPoint. This will send Mark an email notification with my message, and it'll give him a direct link to this item so that he can come in and quickly reply and update the status to let me know if it is indeed blocked or not. Now, all my new issues are assigned to an owner, but I want the new owners to be aware. I can create a rule to do this automatically so that I don't need to message everyone I assign these tasks to. So this is much simpler than going and creating a big Power Automate workflow. In fact, if, if you're an old school SharePoint person, you might remember SharePoint Designer, say SharePoint Designer 2010, SharePoint Designer 2013, maybe when it, when it actually was end of life. But this kind of interface of when item is modified, choose column, change new add value, that, and having these blank spaces reminds me so much of SharePoint Designer. Um, it's almost like we're going back in time a little bit to, to this point in, in where we're at with SharePoint. If, if you do remember SharePoint Designer, it'd be interesting to know how many people do. Drop us a comment below and let us know. I'm going to use a rule where I say, if the assigned to column has anything in it, then I want to send an email to that assigned to person. I am so excited to show you that now you can add a custom message in that rule. So when that automation is triggered, the recipient will see your custom message and get a direct link to the item that they've been assigned to. This list is looking perfect for my team, but how easy is it to set all this up? Let me show you. The list create experience has more options than ever before to get started with a single click. First, you'll notice a brand new type of list you can create, a form, just like the one I made for collecting issues. You don't have to get started with... So actually, that layout has changed multiple times, but you'll notice that, that it was across the top, those kind of like options, just go back a little bit somewhere where it is. Um, it was the options across the very top that has recently changed. So now we've got list, form, uh, gallery, calendar, and board. Um, those are just the different types of templates. And also it's worth checking out these templates down here. I'm not sure yet if they've got examples for each one of these just yet, um, but it's worth going and checking those out because they have sample data. And you can kind of see what it should look like when it actually um, you come through to, to, to building that. To those custom forms works exactly the same inside of Teams. So regardless of where your team works, you have a consistent experience. And you'll see this item where I at mentioned Mark before, but I want to send him a direct link since he has it replied. When I paste it into our chat, you'll notice that the link item unfurls and there's now a chiclet. And this chiclet interacts like a real chiclet's a fun word. Link, <laughs> open it in the browser, or even kick off workflows directly from Teams chat. As part of this launch, my team needs to coordinate our communication strategy. We need to draft, review, approve everything from blog posts to budgets and social media campaigns. To do this, we use a document library. Document libraries are built on the list platform, so they offer secure shared content management from any device, but with all the power I just showed you from lists. Let's take a look. On my launch SharePoint site, I have a document library for all of the public communications we need to coordinate. You'll notice here that I have custom metadata that we know and love, like my status column with all the choice pills, my people column with the people face pile, all the way to the deadline for when this draft needs to turn into a finalized review that gets published. Now I can even go in and I can group this by the content owner so I can easily see what Mark owns versus what I own. I can go into grid view and quickly update and add this draft and add a deadline that I need it to be done by. And then similar to what we saw before, I can update the choice column 
to whatever status it needs to be in to keep my team on track. Now to make everything super clear to my team, I want to configure formatting so that it's very obvious when something is approaching its deadline. I can go in and format my current view with conditional formatting. I realize I'm in the way here. I'm going to edit it and configure if the deadline is before the new year, then I want to see the items that are not yet done since it's getting a little close. And so if the status is not equal to finalized, 